Hello, my name is Dr. Eric Saint-Onge. I'm a chiropractor here at FITS Toronto. And in this video, we'll be going over a few exercises to help maintain hip mobility and hip health. First exercise we'll be doing is the 90-90. And this is a great exercise to help maintain hip mobility and also to gain hip mobility and to keep your hips in really good shape. So this exercise has a lot of different parts to it. From front to end, it takes about 10 minutes to do if we do it the, the full way, and it involves isometric contractions. Now, a isometric contraction is when the muscle is actually squeezing, but nothing's actually moving. And you'll see what I mean in a moment here. So David, the first step here, we're gonna go into a bear sit. So, bear sit should be where the knees come up this way. And if somebody's looking down at David right now, ideally, the knees, the thighs, should form a straight line. So as far as we can muster, all right? And the knees will be actually flexed in 90 degrees. So now, <clears throat> the knees are gonna go down up until you feel that bouncy feeling. So once you're at that bouncy feeling, that's your starting position. So hands on the ankles, and what you're gonna do now is do an isometric contraction into your elbows. So elbows are a brick wall, and we're pushing into our elbows. So right now, the hip adductors, the muscles in here, will be squeezing and we're gonna ramp up to that contraction and hold it for a good 30 seconds. And after 30 seconds, we'll be ramping down. So after 30 seconds is over, we're gonna do the opposite way. So then put your arms behind your knees and now pull your knees down into your arms. So now the muscles in the back here will be squeezing. And again, we're holding this for another 30 seconds. And once that's over, we repeat that once more. So we put the arms on the inside and we squeeze the knees up into the elbows, nice and tight. And after 30 seconds, again, we bring the arms out and pull down into the, uh, the arms. Now the whole time too, we're making sure that we're sitting up straight so we're not uh, slouching here at the low back. Good. So. This is the first step. This takes about two minutes to do. So ideally, if you have a timer that you can just put here in front of you to keep track of time, that would be a good idea. The second step is um, putting one knee inwards. There we go. So one of the reasons why it's called the 90-90 is because we're going to be forming 90 degree angles. So 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and 90 degrees. So the first step is you're gonna be facing your front leg, nice and tall. And staying nice and tall, we're just gonna be leaning forward up until you feel a stretch in that glute. And you can kind of play around with different angles as well if you're leaning straight forward or a little off to the side, or wherever you feel the most stretch is okay. So once we're here, David, do you feel a stretch? Perfect. So what you're gonna do is take this hand Put it on top of your knee, and you're going to be doing an isometric contraction here. So you're going to be pulling up into your hand, but also at the same time, you're going to be pushing your ankle down into the floor. So imagine this motion is happening right now. And we're holding that for 30 seconds. And after 30 seconds are over, then we do the complete opposite. So we're pulling our knee into the floor while trying to bring this up overhead. And again, this is an isometric contraction, so nothing's actually going to be moving in this case. If you have a little bit of trouble kind of visualizing this, what you can actually do is pull, take this hand and try to pull your knee off, but keeping your knee down here. So keep your knee down, but try to pull it up. That'll help you work those muscles just a little bit more. Good, so once 30 seconds is over, then we do the first step again. So hand on top of the knee, pull up into the hand, and pushing the ankle down into the floor. Another 30 seconds, then the opposite way again. So pulling the knee down and bring this up. Good, so again, we're in this position for another two minutes. Now, <clears throat> keeping your legs in this position, Sit up straight, but now turn your body so that you're facing your rear foot here. 
And if you want to lean back a little bit more, that's okay. So you can lean back this way. That's good. So likely in this position, probably be feeling kind of just a lot of tightness in this area, and that's okay. So once we're in this position, <clears throat> we're gonna do the same contractions like we did on the other side. So hand on top of the knee, pull up into your hand, and pushing the ankle down into the actual floor. So we hold that for 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, we do the complete opposite. We pull the knee down into the floor, and we try to rise, raise this up. Good. So again, all the muscle contraction you'll be feeling, all the muscle squeezing will be up in here in the hip. After 30 seconds, we do the first step again. So pull up into your hand, pulling this down into the floor. So we're kind of doing this motion and the opposite way. Good. So pulling down into the floor and pulling up into here. Good. And relax. So again, another two minutes in this position total. So when that's over, we do this, these last two steps, but facing the other direction. So David? Perfect. So altogether, this mobility drill takes 10 minutes to do. Ideally, it's best done at the end of a training session or at the end of practice. Or if you're not practicing that day, um, you can do this at the end of the day, for instance, or anytime during the day, but try to warm up a little bit beforehand. So doing a couple of uh, body, body weight squats, a couple of sets of body weight squats, just to get a little bit warm is a good idea prior to doing this particular drill. Now this next exercise we're going to be doing is called hip cars. And cars is an acronym for controlled articular rotations. Now the idea is that we are going to take our hip joint, this one right over here, and bring it through its full range of motion and draw the biggest circle that we can. So when we're doing this particular exercise, we want to make sure that nothing else is actually moving. We don't want your low back to be moving, your upper back, just your hip. So when we're drawing our circle with this, the idea is that we're trying to push the boundaries of the circle and trying to draw the biggest circle that we can. But again, with ideal form. So first step, David, just have you face over here. So what I want you to do, we're gonna start off with the right hip. So what we're gonna be doing now, David is going to stiffen up. So when I say stiffen up, he's gonna stay stiff in his neck, in his back, in his glutes, his arms, his legs. So he's very rigid. And essentially, that'll make it, make it so that this is more strict and that we're really focusing all our emotion right, um, right at the hip. So being nice and stiff. And you can hold on to something for balance as well. So what we're going to be doing now, David, you're going to bring your knee upwards, toes pointed up. And then bring the knee outwards while still keeping the knee up as high as you can. Then once you get to the end point here, keeping the knee high, bring your foot now upwards this way. Then back behind your body. And then back down to the starting position. Good. So let's do another one, just a little bit faster all the way overhead, pushing all the way up. So keep pushing up into my hand. Good, knee, of foot up and back behind you. Good. And now let's do the opposite direction. So start off coming backwards. Good. And being super strict trying to draw the biggest circle that you can. Excellent. And let's do that one more time. Good, and relax. So 
doing this on both sides, it's a great exercise to help control your, your own hip in its full range of motion. If you're doing this as part of your warm up, you can do this at a max contraction rate about 20 to 30, 20 to 50 percent. Now, if you're doing this more as a training uh, area, then you can use more 50 to 75 percent of your strength, or even up to 100 percent of your strength in some cases. And how long it takes you to do it? About it should take you about maybe roughly five seconds or so to go through one rep. And a good place to start is at least two reps in each direction. Now these two exercises should be done every single day because only when it's done every single day will these exercises help keep your hips in really good shape, very mobile, and in which case will help increase your performance in your respective sport, but also to help prevent any injuries in the future. My name is Dr. Eric Saint-Ange, helping with was uh, David Speciale, our strength coach. And if you have any questions about anything that we went over today, uh, please feel free to leave a comment below or contact us at the office. Thanks very much.